Today's video review, we're going to be continuing our looks at the Diamond Select, the real Ghostbusters, as we have a look at Winston Zedmore. Winston Zedmore was raised in a religious household, but he never believed much in the supernatural before he came to work for the Ghostbusters, brought on board to help the team's three founding members deal with a suspicious spike in paranormal activity. Winston reliably provided the extra manpower that was needed. His enthusiasm for the job faltered slightly when he was arrested with the other Ghostbusters under suspicion of causing an environmental disaster, but the team was vindicated when they repelled an incursion into the dimension by the Sumerian god Gozer. This seven inch action figure is based on the animated series The Real Ghostbusters and features multiple points of articulation as well as accessories and diorama parts. It was designed by Yuri Tim and sculpted by Gentle Giants Studios. The very first thing we'll do is take our tape measure and put it right to the top of Winston Zidmore's head. There we go. The tape measure tells us that from his boots to the top of his head, he stands 7.1 inches in height. In centimeters, that works out to be 18.1 centimeters in height. And showing you what he looks like stacked up with his other real Ghostbusters comrade. Here he is next to the already looked at Egon Spangler. They of course are sharing the exact same bodies. The bodies are identical to one another except for a different swap out of paint and I'm perfectly okay with that. The Kenner real Ghostbuster line actually had characters of various heights. It's actually even more obvious when you looked at Ray's stance. Ray was a much shorter, broader character. That's a nice way of saying it. But uh, Egon, Winston, and uh, Peter all had similar heights. I think Ray was only the one that was a little bit shorter. It's going to be, I think, actually, when it comes to the real Ghostbusters line, um, Diamond Selector basically just across the board giving them the same body molds. I guess in some ways it's disappointing, even though we haven't looked at Ray just yet. Um, I would have liked if Ray was maybe just a little rounder, if you will, so they, they weren't using all the exact same body molds. But even at that, I would, I'm still perfectly fine with the fact that they are using all the same body molds. For Winston's diorama accessories, even though I'm not technically collecting these, he comes with the middle, I believe this to be the middle section of the firehouse. Because we've already looked at this part. You have to kind of use your imagination for it. This part right here that came with the Egon, and then of course this other side's gonna be included with another figure. I believe this is just the center point. It might actually be like this, and then the doors would, you know, this would be the center area, and then the doors would just be right here. The other thing that he comes included with is the hook and ladder. Of course, taking it from the real name of the building or the real building itself that's based from the movie, and of course the cartoon based from that. In the diagram on the back of the package, it doesn't actually show any placement where this goes. So again, I'm thinking that this is just a case where you can attach this to the very top of the firehouse. And if you just want to remove it, you can do that. Because I don't think there is a section where, at least diagram-wise, this is supposed to go. They put a nice wash on it and they've elevated and raised the lettering, which I do like. Uh, again, I guess if I was to build the series, I really think in some ways, for the real Ghostbusters standalone line, this is technically Series 9, but I think what they really could have done was kept the movie figures and the real Ghostbuster figures as two separate lines. This should have actually been Series 1. The movie f figures, the movie-based characters, should have continued on their very own series. Instead of this being Series 9, I really think that this could have easily had its own build build components because really to go through nine series with these ones specifically as well you may either want to pick up real ghostbuster figures or you may not some people may actually want to get real ghostbuster figures and some may also just want to get the movie ghostbuster figures so i do really think that 
for this particular lineup, Diamond Select probably should have had this as a separate series and not classed it as Series 9 and then given them the very own option to build something and something that one viewer had even thrown around the idea of doing was even if they had done a Build Ecto-1 in the real Ghostbusters look. That would have been really cool. I don't know how that would have all come together because of course it would have been a lot more moving components to it. But I do think it should have really come with its own components, its own build of pieces, specifically for the real Ghostbusters. Anyways, so having a look at his accessories, now we were talking a little bit about Samesies. Samesies being the same body molds, he actually does come with the same accessories as well as Egon Spangler. But what's interesting though is the Proton Stream. If you look at the two Proton Streams, there's Winston's, there's Egon's. They are identical to one another. I don't think there's really that much different to it, other than obvious astute viewers will notice that the coloring of the stream is completely different. A nice little nod to the Kenner line, because the beams, the streams of the Ghostbuster figures were each unique to one another. So Winston actually had yellow, Egon had somewhat closer to red, Ray had orange, and then Peter had uh, green. So it's going to be interesting to see when we have a look at both Peter and Ray, especially Peter, because you don't really expect to see a green proton stream. But it will be interesting to see if uh, Diamond Select continues the trend of giving us nods to the original toy lineup, even though technically this isn't quite, it's not quite red. It's still kind of placed this closer to being orange. This could have probably been something that came with uh, Ray, but maybe Ray is going to have an even lighter orange colored stream. They do attach also the exact same way, or this one attaches the same way as Egon, and uh, we will look at that in a second. But all of which, like I said, all the accessories are identical to one another. We reach off camera, I reach off camera, and you can see that you get two PK meters. This one here was included with Winston, this one here was included with Egon. I suppose you could argue the fact that the, the little uh, antenna on the top are wider and further out from one another than the one that came with Egon. This would be also interesting that if they did use these with all the characters, if these antennas would, as you would see, progressively move all the way up. Maybe one of the figures has them straight up. It's a nice way to make use of the same mold if you have to use the exact same mold to give us the same accessory. These could easily be changed and I don't know, I'm only speculating no tele I'm, I'm not any psychic, so. But I do think that the details on these are rather nice. I like always the blue motif of the real Ghostbusters tech, and I do like these quite a bit. Even though, again, you're getting the same stuff as we had gotten before. Extra accessories certainly don't, I don't mind extra accessories, when it especially comes to the ghost traps. I mean, as a kid, I would fall in love with the fact that these, these toys were out now, but this would involve me to time travel back to when I was a kid. I was doing anything and everything, even using G.I. Joes at one point to pretend that they were Ghostbusters. And of course, I didn't have the uh, the accessories like this, so I had to sort of pretend that I was using weapons and stuff like that as ghost fighting technology. So, I mean, the fact that we get all these extra traps, sign me up, I'm certainly perfectly fine with that. Uh, these, once again, the cording here, I don't know if I would be unraveling it as much, letting it unwind itself up. Being that this is plastic, I don't know if it's going to start developing stress marks, but you got the little working pedal. It's not quite working. It's, you have to use your imagination, but the little pedal there on the end, some nice coloring of red and blue paint on there along with some silver. And you got some nice labels, well, not labels, paint and stuff added here in orange, yellow, and red. A little bit of white in there as well. So overall, nice looking trap. A variation, of course, to this is that they could have the trap with the opening doors, or a door's already opened. Something else they could they incorporate there as well. Moving along, the other accessories he comes included with, of course, is the gloved hands. Same thing as what we saw with Egon. Same thing we've also seen with the movie figures as well. You get a set of, well, two pairs of two hands. That gives us a total of four hands excluding, of course, the bare hands that he's currently got in, in his sockets. Um, if you do want to change out any one of his hands, by the way, it's just simply a case of popping the hand out like so, finding the appropriate hand that you want to use. Let's say 
we're going to go ahead and grab this hand. You first take the glove portion, slide that over the forearm, and then you're going to go ahead and take the hand and just plug it in place. I'll keep one bare and I'll keep the other one in, in a, as a gloved hand so you can see the difference between the two. They, they are right there. There's the bear. And then there is the gloved hand. Before we look at the figure itself, the uh, proton pack also is the exact same one that we got with Egon, complete with the proton wand, and of course the connecting tube. Uh, it clips into place the same way, although I do feel like this one clips a little bit better and stays a little bit more in place than the one that came included with Egon. That Now that varies, shouldn't vary really from figure to figure, but it's just really a case of some of them mold-wise might just work a little bit better than others. I just find that the Winston here does work a little bit better holding it in place than the one we had with Egon. Spectacularly sculpted, well painted here. You've got the little uh, meter dial there and some nice coloring accurate to that of the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Now let's have a look at his face. Now this certainly is something that's been up for debates for the very longest time, even reading some of the comments. Uh, of the Egon review that I've done. Some people are okay with the designs. Some people think that they're a little too realistic. I think I'm kind of happy with that middle mark of them being slightly more realistic and yet still exhibiting like cartoon features. It does look like a cartoon version of Winston, but a little bit more realistic. If that makes any sense whatsoever. The sculpt I think is passable. It's quite good. I think I like the Egon one just a little bit more. There's the Egon one once again. They're definitely not quite cartoon. Literally not taking them from, if you had reached with the power of the magic in your hand, if you could reach into the TV and grab one of the characters from Real Ghostbusters, I'm sure he wouldn't like that, pull him through the TV set. I don't think he would look like this. This is sort of kind of a cross between what Kenner would have produced if Kenner could be produced now. And this is also a little bit of what we get from the cartoon. So it's kind of a happy medium between a Kenner figure and also the real Ghostbusters characters from the cartoon. It's a nice little happy medium. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Like I said, the head sculpt is quite good. Paint is really good as well. You see a little bit of his teeth visible. I got this one little nick right here of paint. I don't know if that's supposed to be there. But it's enough that I don't really notice it too much. I just felt the need to point that out to you that I've got that little bit of paint right there. I like that you see his teeth a little bit, that he's not completely a closed mouth. Like I said, the head sculpt is really good. I'm happy with the paint as well. And like in the cartoon, he has, of course, his unique uh, ghost-busting uh, uh, outfit here, the onesie outfit, uh, here in the colors of... I think in the video I had actually said that the colors were like pink and blue, but these were actually closer to being brown and a lighter shade of blue. I don't know if I even mentioned this, but I like that they're, like in the cartoon, they've got the little cuffs at the tops of their boots. They've also put in a little bit of the silver there on the sides for where the laces feed themselves through. I get a little bit of blue peeking through. I don't know if that's supposed to be intentional. I did notice that this boot doesn't seem to have that. There's the under treads of his feet. Winston stands a lot better on, and that's good. Um, of course, this being using the same mold, um, it does run into the problems that, of course, the figures might get mold uh, wear, you know, where they're using the exact same mold again and again, may cause a figure to get a little loose in the joints. Luckily, so far, Winston doesn't seem to have that problem. Uh, by the way, you can take the proton wand and you can fit it into his hand. Just plug that in place like that. It's a little more difficult, I find, to get into the gloved hand for some strange reason. And then you can take the bare hand or the gloved hand. It's entirely, entirely your preference. There you go. And then you can have him holding the proton wand. And then for one better, you can go ahead and take the proton stream. And it just attaches this kind of clear cap, fits over top of the proton wand. And then you've got yourself the proton stream. And I might very well display all my figures like this. I wonder, talking a little bit, I did before, 
I hope that we're going to get some ghosts as well. That, I think, is the key for this, this line to be successful, is bring in some of the ghosts. Of course, we already have Slimer, so this is a good starting point for us to gauge where Diamond Select is on their accuracy to at least the ghosts. Slimer looks pretty good, and I'm looking forward to getting that one opened up. Maybe eventually we may see the likes of, like, a Boogeyman again, Sam Hain, uh, the Sandman, for example, and even maybe a, a Marshmallow Man. That would be kind of cool as well. But it's only uh, time will tell be a case of whether we're going to get all that stuff or not. Or I guess the success of this line, this these certain figures that we've already looked at so far, will dictate whether the line will f continue to flourish. I mean, it does seem like Diamond Select are continuing to want to release more and more Ghostbuster figures, both movie figures, and then again, I hope, more of the real Ghostbusters as well. Okay, so let's go through his posability. If you are not new to this, these will all seem like normal things that you've seen before. So, for example, his head hinges not too much up. Down certainly a lot more, but his up only goes to about there. The head rotates all the way around. Uh, as for shoulders, they hinge out. A little looser on the shoulders, but I'm, I'm okay with they're not deal-breaking yet. The arms rotate. He has a bend at the elbow. The elbows also rotate right there. This is a separate piece altogether. It's kind of a softer rubber. And I usually just kind of tuck that to the back of his forearm. The hands also rotate all the way around. And you can also hinge them back and forth. When you get them with the gloves, they seem a little bit more limited because you're putting like the bottom of the glove over top of that hinge. But you can still, you can still move the hands back and forth. He has an upper torso ball joint. Um, I did try it on Winston as well. It doesn't seem like you can remove the, the proton packs. Um, they could release the figures without proton packs as a possibility. kind of wish that they could have made it so that you could have detached it somewhere. Not maybe so visibly from the front where they would have put pegs, but maybe somewhere along the lines of the back they could have done something there where you could have detached the proton pack if you wanted to. Oh, also, also just because I want to contain these reviews to one another. There is this little tab point right here that you can take the, the ghost trap and just attaches to the top. It attaches awkwardly on an angle, but it still attaches to the proton pack nonetheless, just in case somebody was wondering. Um, as for the legs, well, like I said, we've already looked at the upper torso ball joint. He has a waist swivel. The legs split out. He also has a forward and back motion on the legs. A, three-quarter, about a half-cut swivel on the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee. And uh, as for his feet, he's got an ankle pivot. The foot hinges back and forth. No, he doesn't have, unfortunately, toe articulation. I don't really think he necessarily needs toe articulation. He does exactly what he would need to do. I mean, you could get the figures into some interesting enough poses. Kind of also wish that the figures could have come with display stands. I mean, I don't certainly want complicated display stands, but at the very least, maybe a oval-shaped display stand that they could really use across the board for all of their figure releases. With the real Ghostbusters, they could simply just put real Ghostbusters on the top of the display stand if they included them. It was kind of hard to come to an overall opinion of the figure line when we first only had a look at Egon Spangler. Now that we've had a look at two figures in on a four-figure team, I can think I can take a recess here and stop for a second, kind of assess where I think the line is going so far. My feelings as a whole for the figure line is I'm pretty impressed with it. A lot of people I know have debated the question of whether the cartoon characters looked cartoony enough in this lineup, and this is something that's, I think, going to separate some of the collectors. For those diehard fans of the real Ghostbusters wanting exact carbon copies of what they look like in the series, you may be slightly disappointed. Sure, Diamond Select could have made them a little bit more screen accurate or television accurate, if you will. DC Collectibles have done that for a while now with their Batman animated series and the new Adventures of Batman figures, giving us something that looks almost identical to what they've seen or what we've seen in the series. But the trade-off, unfortunately, for that is if anybody has collected any of the Batman Animated Series figure line, you'll know that those figures are often very frail, very flimsy, and very fragile. Sure, you have a nice screen-accurate or cartoon-accurate look of the characters, but unfortunately the trade-off is a character that you really are a figure you really can't do too much with. 
Diamond Select, I think, like I said, have walked that fine line, that very fine line of giving us something that's a little bit cartoon and certainly a little bit more realistic, making use of, of course, existing molds that they have. And that's, of course, one thing that toy companies are always wanting to do. It'll be until the end of time, cartoon or toy companies will always try to be making use of existing molds that they have. They want to save the most of money that they possibly can. So if they can get more out of a mold, why not? This is what's causing these figures to share similar molds to their movie counterparts. And again, I'm okay with that because they have similar costumes anyways. It's really just the colorings that are drastically different. So at the end of the day, and now taking my recess to look at the two figures in, I'm pretty happy with these. The telltale sign for me is when we start looking at the ghosts. I think the ghosts are really going to be what defines this line. Hopefully, we're not just going to get ourselves the, the human characters. I think that is really where this line could suffer. They've done a pretty good job of the movie characters giving us ghosts as well as the, the actual human characters. I can hope they do the exact same thing for the real Ghostbusters as well. Okay, so we're two figures in at least of the real Ghostbusters. So weigh in, guys. Let me know down below what you think of this figure line so far. Do you think they're cartoony enough, or do you think they're a little bit too realistic? I always like reading your comments down below. In the meantime, today's video, we were having a look at the Diamond Select. This was the real Ghostbusters, Winston Zetmore. Don't worry, we're going to also have a look at Slimer. Uh, he's going to be coming up in the next review, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? More videos, including more real Ghostbusters reviews, will be coming your way soon to this channel. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.